Hi, my name is Jeff Lindsay. Today I want to talk to you about artificial intelligence tools that can help strengthen your patents and your IP strategy. I'm with Planet Lindsay LLC out of Appleton, Wisconsin, and today I'm going to share some recent experiences with three different artificial intelligence tools that all have potential relevance to intellectual property work. There's an AI opportunity that I think we need to think about regardless of which tool we go with. Artificial intelligence tools have reached what, what could be considered a tipping point where they can be truly useful in many fields of work, including intellectual property work. Their ability to tr seemingly understand language and apply it and apply the concepts they extract from language in new ways makes these tools a potential game changer when it comes to innovation and intellectual property work. The tools we're going to consider today include ChatGPT, and I've used both version 3.5 and 4 from uh, OpenAI. Also, we're considering Amplified, the tool from Amplified.ai, which is specifically designed as a patent search tool, and also Eureka, from PatSnap, another patent search tool using in, um, artificial intelligence. So let's start with ChatGPT. This has received a lot of attention recently and some controversy. Uh, in my estimation, it is a brilliant AI chat tool that has access to vast amounts of data and it can tell you about almost anything and even make some very impressive connections when you ask it to. This is a tool that I feel is very capable in understanding and responding to questions and applying its huge body of data to give creative and often useful replies. This is a tool that should not be neglected. It has limitations though you need to pay attention to. Its knowledge horizon, for example, ended on September 2021. That's for both versions. This makes it of relatively little use if you're trying to understand current events or even competitive intelligence or recent trends, recent changes in law, it's not going to help you. It also cannot access the internet to verify or find information. That includes patent databases, they're off limits, although it has a, a lot of knowledge about patents, apparently from patent databases, but be careful. Sadly, this tool can often be dishonest, making claims, that's my, I put it in quotes because it's just doing the best it can as a machine, but it makes claims that are simply untrue in many cases. It will apologize when you call it out, but it doesn't learn from these mistakes. And it will readily, this is the most uh, bizarre thing to me, but it will readily provide citations, quotes, and even URLs that are simply wrong. So, don't trust, always verify. And famously, it can be highly biased on very sensitive topics. It will do, for example, uh, not to get too much into politics here, but it will do great, uh, for me, it's done some really great jokes and limericks about uh, Republican candidates. When I ask it to do the same about Democratic Party candidates, it says, oh no, that would be offensive and rude. We must be polite and respectful for all people. So it has some questionable, um, standards that can be sometimes very entertaining. But if you understand it and work with it, I think you can do some great things with ChatGPT. Here's one example where it's really useful in finding the right words. I've been doing some work recently with a really great client involving um, uh, lights, LED lights and so forth, and I wanted to understand some of the language to get the words right. Uh, one of my first tests with ChatGPT was to see if it could come up with the word luminaire, which appears to be a word of choice for a particular field of art with LED lights. So I asked it this question, hey, I'm doing a, a patent with, that involves LED lights, it's for a high base setting, what are the right words to describe the overall light? Do I talk about a trough or a lamp or what? And it came right back and said, hey, you should be using the word luminaire or fixture or lamp, but luminaire is the first one it gave and that's a good one. Then it went on and explained what troffer means and it gave limitations. It seems to understand the context of words and how they're used in specific art fields. This makes it an extremely valuable tool when you're doing patents. But for finding prior art, I had a lot of trouble. Many fails were encountered. For example, I asked for evidence related to a particular shape of a carton for one of my, uh, one of my clients. And it came back and said, oh yeah, yeah, that shape is well known. Here's an example. It cited a particular example, said it was filed by Elopac, which is a, a Scandinavian company, and went on and said how it describes a certain carton. Problem is, 
That's not even close to being true. This patent describes a powder dispenser. It's not by Elopac. It had nothing to do with the shape I was asking about. This was a worthless answer, but it looked truthy. And I've had this happen a number of times. They'll give a patent number and say, there you go, and it's not even, not even close. So I, I would say that the majority of patents that it has cited to me were wrong or made up. Likewise, many articles or URLs that I've gotten from ChatGPT were simply wrong. Don't trust it. And many times it seems to pretend to know things that it doesn't really know. Uh, ChatGPT4 seems better in this area, but is still flawed. So for finding prior art, don't rely on ChatGPT. Uh, but here's an example of something that I thought was really useful. Uh, problem solving. For example, I, I threw out a question and said, hey, there's an electronic device that has some zinc on the surface. Is that a problem? And it came back and gave me three different problems that could be, uh, that could be considered and possible solutions that typically involved codings. I'm just showing part of, his, of Chad GPT's answer here. But to me, that was impressive. The ability to understand and figure out potential problems when queried about them. Um, this is good. So how do you use ChatGPT for intellectual property? Well, first of all, I recommend using the, the paid version. It's $20 a month right now, ChatGPT4. It's more accurate, tends to give better answers, uh, more complete answers. Um, use Chat, but both ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 will, will do a lot for you. So you can use it to expand examples, such as list of related components, alternative approaches, related technologies, similar materials, things you need to do to flesh out your disclosure or your patent application. It's also great for finding the right language to accurately describe something. And that is very valuable in, in drafting a patent. It can also give you guidance on many issues. You can say, hey, if we combine these two chemicals, what kind of reaction might occur? Or what would happen if this were used for this? Or describe how I could apply element A with widget B and so forth. And it does a pretty decent job much of the time. And it can also describe things in patent language if you need it. I would not rely on this, but it can help maybe for some routine descriptions. But again, be very cautious. It's not really designed to be an intellectual property tool. Let's turn now to Amplified AI. This is a patent service tool. It's been out for about three years. I first tried it three years ago and, and was impressed, thought it was cool, but I wasn't overwhelmed. Now. I'm at that overwhelmed stage, or really impressed, wowed, I should say. It's a patent search tool that uses AI to understand concepts and find related material that traditional searches miss. It tries to understand a document at the document level, broad concepts, and regardless of what language or what, what particular terminology is used. So it's made a lot of progress in three years. Most recently, I was able to find direct hits right away that I had eluded me with my traditional search methods. That is a game changer for me. I'm very impressed with this tool. So how does it work? Um, at a broad level, it is uh, using language and a deep understanding of language, similar to what we find in ChatGPT, to understand and parse what a patent is all about and different aspects of that, of that patent so it can find details that you're looking for. Um, and you can use this, it learns from what you provide it. If you know there are some uh, things that are close to what you're looking for, you can describe it with a short description, you can give it some patents, uh, it'll give, come back with some tentative results and you rate it and say, this is close, this is not. It learns from this and then can go on and make some really smart uh, searches. You can do this iteratively and tweak with a lot of control. I find this a very nice approach. Here's one example of some search results. The query here was a simple one. I was looking for a particular carton design that has to do with some the way angles are used in the bottom portion of a carton. And I simply said, uh, look for something with beverage cartons with bottom crease lines at an angle less than 45 degrees. And I also used the sentence, aseptic cartons formed from a blank with crease lines. Ah, notice how I misspelled blank, B-A-L-N-K. I would like to say that was part of my deliberate, very smart test. but. It was a typo which often occurs when you're typing and exploring and it did a good job of recognizing what I was probably trying to say and searching for the right thing because it came back with very good and impressive hits. In fact, within the first five or six, um, well actually there were a couple of very good hits in the top ten that 
would have taken me a long time by other methods to find. The interface is very nice, lets you get PDFs and other things very quickly. You can display uh, things however you want. You can make it show drawings as well as the abstract, keywords, and so forth. And this is also very easy to export, uh, copy and paste. It's an elegant interface and you find things quickly. With as some of its strengths, this again, the great interface is very easy to use, very broad international database. Um, expert understanding of what is in those patents. And also I need to point out there's a special strength in Japanese patents. We expect there to be great strength, ease of use for English patents, but I was impressed at how much it knows about Japan and uh, I guess Asian languages in general. But the Japanese patents really impressed me. Um, kudos to the CEO, Samuel Davis, move this up here, uh, who has given this a strong trajectory and a vision that makes me excited about where it's going. I had a chat with Samuel recently and learned, got some of his insights and what their goal is, where they're going to be heading in the coming years, and this is one to keep an eye on and, and, uh, and grow with. I'm very impressed with this and, and the work that Samuel and his team have been doing. Let me turn to the next agent, which is Eureka by PatSnap. Now, PatSnap's a company, a uh, search engine that I, I've used for years while I was in China. Uh, very, really like it. Great Chinese interface, great English interface. Now they've got a new tool uh, called Eureka that's ac accessible at eureka.jihuiya, which is PatSnap in Chinese.com. Um, this tool, uh, is an artificial intelligence tool and on the surface of it, it looks like it should be doing a great job in finding things. However, I struggled. Uh, here is a search uh, some, uh, for another carton related invention. I'm looking for an aseptic carton that provides increased volume per unit area by having concave edges or a polygonal, polygonal cross section. So how did it do? Well, the results, it came back with results, but I saw nothing in those results that was that was related to my, my query. Nothing related to carton, aseptic packaging, liquid foods, or paperboard. Uh, here's an example that seemed to get really hung up on the, the cross-sectional shape and it was coming back with all sorts of tools and gadgets and devices that had you know, hollow plates and so forth, but they had an a, 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 um, unusual cross-section of some kind of polygon. And um, I got better results when I focused in on one particular manufacturer that I rec recognized as someone that might have something relevant. And it did finally get something involving packaging machines, but it was a transport device for packaging machines, nothing related to what I was looking for. So I was disappointed with this. Um, so I tried another approach where you know, I mentioned having that typo, spelling blank wrong. Um, here we have that same search that gave me great results with Amplified.ai and that query gave me one, only one hit and it had nothing to do with cartons or aseptic packaging or anything. It's some uh, business method type of patent from Singapore. Uh, not helpful, not even close. So. The problem of typo recognition is a serious one. I also uh, had a search for an aseptic carton with a multi-layer coding, but I left out the A. Uh, this is the kind of typo that basic web search engines and other search engines have no problems. Rec they recognize what you want, but, but PatSnap gets hung up on this, or not, the uh, Eureka gets hung up on this and gave me zero hits. Ah, that was unfortunate. So typos are a problem. The Chinese didn't help. Uh, I gave it a softball question. It came up with some hits, but only 20 when there should have been hundreds. Result, disappointment. Overall impression, Eureka is not really ready for prime time. Uh, Chat GPT can be useful. You can use it to uh, expand examples and list, propose new applications, answer many basic questions, even help you in some of your language, but it's weak for competitive intelligence or prior art search, and of course, you can't always trust it. Conclusions. ChatGPT can help flesh out inventions. Eureka by PatSnap, uh, at the moment it seems weak, but Amplify.ai uh, really wowed me. I think we've got something here, something to keep, uh, keep an eye on, keep watching, and grow with it. And I highly recommend it for intellectual property work. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions or comments, you can send them to me, jeff at planetlindsay.com. I'm also on LinkedIn if you want to connect and communicate there. 
Thanks very much for your time and attention, and I hope we'll uh, all keep benefiting from the rich power that artificial intelligence now provides. Thanks.